Man, that's a that's a rough looking bunch back there in the back. <laughs> it is really good to see y'all here this morning. I'm glad you came. I think we're gonna have a good Sunday school class. We had a good service this morning. It's just good to be here. We have got uh, got a lot to do. Let's pray. We'll get started. Father, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for allowing us to be here and the blessings you've given us. We just pray, Father, for loving actors for taking care of us. We're thankful for Father. Mm -hmm. Those who are healing to come back to church. We pray for those who are still sick, Lord. You just bless them and watch over them. Look at them. Help them to heal. Pray for our Sunday school class. We just have the Holy Spirit with us to help us to do good things, Lord. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Is your part going? Well, it's on me. Now, whether it's on or not, I don't you might need to pull it up a little bit. Let me check it. So, I just, I just enjoy this thing so much. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's on. Okay. Uh, all right. Take the Bible. Turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 1. Now, we've been talking about for the last little bit. Um, the enemies of a Christian. We've been talking about Satan and we're in the middle of talking about the world. Uh, what we talked about last Sunday was the fact that everything in the world belongs to God. God has given us dominion over everything in the world. Um, how we should not lose our dominion. Um, we should not love the things of the world. The world is full of wickedness, and we need to learn how to deal with it. Uh, one thing that we need to think about, and we need to, as we go through this, we need to keep this in mind all the way through this. We talked about this last week. Uh, we're not in this by ourselves, okay? God doesn't expect us to manage these things by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Got the Holy Spirit to help us, which is the difference between us and a lost person. We have the Holy Spirit to help us. We have the Holy Spirit to lead us. So we're not able to learn. Now, what we want to talk about this morning, um, and this is a little different, but this is something I, I think we need to think about. So let me tell you this. Last Sunday, uh, I went to church at Christiansburg with our daughter, son-in-law. We go over there every now and then to go to church. And the church they go to is a, it's a good church, good strong church. They've got a good pastor. It's a independent Baptist church. Now, the preacher over there last Sunday had, it seemed like he had a real burden for this. And, and this is what we need to think about. Now you need to keep in mind, in Blacksburg and Christiansburg, because of the university, because of the hospitals, because of the doctors and the lawyers, there are a lot of liberal thinking people mm -hmm. in that part of the country. Now, there are also a lot of good, strong, conservative Christians in that part of the country, but, but you understand what they're dealing with over there that we're not really dealing with here. Now, next thing, there are people, Christian people, who have trouble, have problems with the signs of the world and with what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. right? Now, one of these things that has become a real problem is how does, how do we justify believing creation? Okay? When we got all this information that's telling us that the earth is a million years old. Right. How do we how do we put that together? Okay, and that's becoming a problem. Now, before we go any further, it's not a problem for me. I don't, I, I don't believe any of that, but it is a problem. And when you begin to have these liberal thinking people, they're looking for answers. Okay, y'all remember that, right? Okay, look at your Bible, Genesis chapter one, verse one. Would you read that, Lord Sue? Verse 1. 
Verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay. The earth, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was void and without form. Now, what these people have done to justify the fact that the earth is a million years old is they have come up with what's called the gap theory. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Now, this is not what I believe. This is not what our church believes. This is not what our preacher preaches. But we need to talk about this for just a minute. Now, this gap theory is the idea that between Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and verse 2, there's a gap. Okay? All right? Now, this gap could have lasted for hundreds of thousands of years. God made the earth, and what these people say is when God created the heavens and the earth, they were perfect. Okay? Now we get to verse 2, which says, the earth is void and without form. See that? All right, so they're saying something happened in there between those two verses. Okay? Now, here's where it really goes off the charts. Uh, they believe, and, and, and they're anything. I mean, they, they come up with all kinds of off the wall stuff. For example, when Satan was kicked out of heaven, he came to the earth. This was, before, this was in this gap. Okay? And there, were, there was a race of human beings that lived on the earth with Satan in this gap. Something bad undoubtedly happened. A flood, earthquakes, whatever happened, and this race of people was destroyed, which made the earth void and without form. Okay? Now, as I said before, I don't believe that's okay. But these people do. Now, here's the problem. Okay? Here is, here is where it, it becomes a real problem. You know? That preacher over there is telling his congregation, I have seen people who believe this. I know good, solid, Christian, church-going people who are beginning to lean in this direction. I know churches that are starting to talk. And we're talking about these churches. I know churches that are starting to talk about this. Okay? And you can tell from his sermon, it, it was bothering it was wearing them. Now, here's what that has to do with us. And we talked about this before. We sit out here in the country and nothing really bothers us. You know? I mean, we see it on TV. Uh, you uh, read about the newspaper on the internet. But we've still got our own little thing going here. Which is not a bad, it's not bad. You know? That's a good thing in a lot of ways. But the problem is, all of this stuff is headed our way. And we need to be prepared for it. Right. We need to understand what's happening, and we need to know what to do about it. Uh, I told you, or we discussed before, remember the biblical worldview? Remember us talking about that? Biblical worldview. All right? The four pillars of a biblical worldview are creation, Rebellion, salvation, and restoration. Okay? We talked about the rebellion part. We went over that very carefully, Adam and Eve. Now, this gap theory is messing with right. the creation part. Okay? And we, we have to be, we should be, as a church and as Christian people, as solid as a rock in creation. Mm -hmm. We know exactly what happened. We know how long it took, we know who did it, and there's no, that's one of our, that's our core beliefs, okay? Now there are things that uh, as we learn and as we study, our beliefs begin to change a little bit. This is not one of those things. True. Okay? Let's keep that in mind. That's a lot of gloom and doom all of a sudden, right off the bat, <laughs> okay? Let me show you something good now. But, like I say, if you hadn't seen this guy preaching, this was really, this was really bothering him. And what was bothering him was the fact that 
people are, are beginning, good Christian people are beginning to believe this. Yeah. You know? We gotta be careful. We gotta watch when we run into those things and we have to be grounded in what we believe. Okay. okay. Take your Bibles and turn to John chapter wait, gotta go to the last one. John chapter sixteen. John chapter sixteen, verse thirty three. Chapter 16, verse 33. Are you awesome? Uh, good, good. John 16, verse 33. It says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Mm. Right? Remember that word, overcome. Okay. Go to First John. First John chapter five. First John chapter five and verse number four. First John chapter five, verse number four. This says. Now we want to look at this closely. This says, "But whatsoever is born of God." Stop right there. Look at me. That's me. That's you. You're sitting this morning. You're saved. That's you. Whatsoever is born of God. So that's what we're talking about here. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Just stop right there, man. Look at me. Now, what does it mean to overcome the world? Christ said back here in the book of John, I have overcome the world. He says right here, the Holy Spirit leads us right here. Me, because I'm saved, I have overcome the world. Okay? What's that mean? If I'm going to explain to a lost person, or think about this for a minute. You're at home, and your son, daughter, grandson, granddaughter, and you're looking at the Bible, and they say, well, what does this mean right here? Where it says, I have overcome the world. What are you going to tell them? Come on, come on. What are you going to tell them? If you're buried in your uh, faith in God, uh, in faith, and, uh, you're just girded. Explain girded. <laughs> that means you're uh, just totally in. Well, hold on. Grounded? Grounded. You're, no. We're grounded. Is that okay? Is that good, Joe? Okay, we have, first of all, because we're saved, we have a solid foundation. Yeah. Okay, and I'm thinking about that just a minute. Those of you that are sitting here that are saved, do you have a solid foundation? Yeah. Are you good? You own, you, you're building on a rock? That's right, yeah. Okay, well, you need to be. If not, you need to be. But, so, we have overcome. All right, you got a strong foundation. Is that it? Anything else, Court? Help me here a little bit, son. Overcome the world. The world has no power over us other than what we yield to it. Do you hear what he said, Court? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, what happens in this world, Jesus wins. Okay. All right. Jesus wins. Therefore, we win. Right. Okay. All right, we're struggling with this a little bit now. This is not that hard. Say what you said one more time. It said the world has no power over us other than what we yield to it, like it says in Romans chapter 6. The world has no power over us except what we yield to it. Now, that except what we yield to it, that's important. We're going to talk about that this morning. Okay, we have overcome. Now, let's look at the rest of this verse. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We have overcome the world because of our faith. That's right. All right? That's what God, that's what God is here. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth? Our faith is in Jesus Christ. Basically what that's telling us is we have overcome the world because of our faith in Jesus Christ. That makes sense? Okay? 
Now, a lost person has not overcome the world. That's right. right. And we talked about this when we were talking about Satan. If, if you're sitting here and you're lost, or if you're listening on Facebook and you're lost, you're fighting a losing battle, right? You cannot deal with Satan by yourself. He will end up in a lost person's life. And actually, we talked about some Bible verses where it says he blinded the minds, remember that? Of those who were lost. You can't win against Satan if you're lost. And it is the same way with the world, right? You, you can't, our dominion in the world, all right? When you, if you're lost, you, you have dominion, okay, over the things of the world. But you're not going to keep it, all right? You'll never be able to maintain your dominion over the world if you're lost. It goes back to what we were talking about a few minutes ago about the fact that we're not in this by ourselves, okay? We have to have the help. We have to be saved to have the help, all right? So we have overcome we have overcome the world. Now, <clears throat> let's think about this for a minute. If I have overcome the world, and you all said we have, the Bible says that we have. If I have overcome the world, then why is the world such a problem? It is a problem, right? The world is a problem. We're dealing with it every day hard and fast as we can. It's becoming more of a problem every day, but we have overcome the world, so why is it a problem for a Christian? We're still here. What? We're still here. Yes, we are still here. Yeah, so it's, it's okay. I said spiritual battle. Spiritual battle, yeah. We're dealing with it on the spiritual level. See, and, and there again, that's where we need the Holy Spirit. Right? That's where we need that help. Now, let me tell you this story. Um, two or three years ago, <coughs> Patty and I were traveling, and it, it was Saturday night, and we were in San Antonio, Texas. So we thought, we were staying in the motel, we thought, well, we'll go to church in the morning, Sunday morning. So we started looking for church. We ended up going to John Hagee's church in San Antonio on Sunday morning, Cornerstone Church. Before we go any further, I'm not selling John Hagee, okay? <laughs> Whatever you believe about John Hagee is your business. But, and it was, really, it was really pretty neat. If you've ever been in a church service where they have TV cameras, that's craziness. I mean, you're sitting there, like you're sitting right there, well, all of a sudden, here comes this guy with a TV camera, and he's standing right here. Like this. It's a little bit... Uh, Distracting, I guess would be the best word for it, until you get used to it. But of course, all the people there were used to it. They didn't pay no attention. They got all these people moving around, TV cameras, all that kind of stuff. Anyhow, his son preached a message and, and had a really good message. And when he came out on the stage that they have there, he brought with him a door. This was a door in a frame, like this, open and shut, on wheels. He rolls it out there like this. His message is about uh, Christian people, when they get saved, going through that door. All right? Doors open. You get saved. You step through this door. And you're saved. Okay? By the grace of God. Now, what he said, and this is what we're talking about. Problem that Christian people have, and here's why the world's a problem for us. The problem that Christian people have is when they go through that door, they don't want to shut it. Mm, that's right. right? They yep. want to leave the door open. The reason they leave the door open is so they can go back through it. Okay? Back to the world. You know, I'm over here and I'm saved and I'm tickled to death and I'm loving the Lord, but. And I may want to eat back over here. See what's still going on. That's why the world's a problem. It is my choice. Right? Yep. The world is a problem for me 
it's my fault. That's right. Remember when we talked about that? If Satan is working in my life, it's my fault. The Bible tells us plainly, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. Right? He's working in my life, and then there's something wrong on my end. It's not on the other end. Okay? So, we want to go back through the door. Now, we have to keep in mind here, again, that this is, this is our choice, and that's why that it is a problem. Okay, take your Bibles and turn to Psalms chapter 95. Psalms chapter 95. Look at verses uh, 8 and 9. Okay? Verses 8 and 9. It says, now we're, we're, we're getting ready to, we've been talking about this, we're getting ready to switch gears here just a little bit. Okay? So hang in there. It says, harden not your heart, as in provocation, and as in the day of temptation. Alright? Here's what comes from the world. Here is where our problems with the world start is this temptation. That's what we're going to talk about for a minute. This temptation. Okay? Harden not your heart, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Okay? Now, go to 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians uh, chapter 10. And we'll start in uh, verse 5. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. Now, in Psalms every minute ago, we were talking about the people of Israel. Here again, we're talking about the people of Israel. Okay? Now, it says, but with many of them, God was not well pleased, and they were overthrown in the wilderness. For these things were our example. Now, our that's me and you. They're talking to me and you right now. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is our example. These things that happened to the people of Israel in the wilderness, this is an example for us. All right? Keep that in mind. Now, these things were our example to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat, drink, rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and destroyed the servants. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples. See there again. This is an example for us. All right? We need to learn from this. Sure. For examples and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world have come. Now the simplest way to think about the people of Israel in the wilderness and the temptations that they gave into and when we start thinking about this being an example for us if you want to know what not to do there is where you go look at okay <laughs> everything they did was was the majority of the things they did were wrong the majority of the decisions they made were wrong all right <clears throat> they would be going down a road get tempted off the road to go god punished them Back to the road they go. Down the road a little further, off the road they go. God punished them, back to the road they go. Right? We're all, we're, and I know I'm speaking for myself, but I know that that happens to us. We do the same thing. Yeah. You know? You're going down the road, everything's going fine. Okay? 
you're in pretty good shape. Your relationship with the Lord's good. Everything's good at home. Uh, you got plenty of money. All of a sudden, phew, here we go. Right? And you get over here, and the Lord, bang, on the back of the head and says, hey, what are you doing? You think, oh, whoa, whoa, I ain't got no business over here. So back over here we come. Like a little kid. Down the road we go. Then it happens again. Boom, off the road we go. All right? You know, it's not a sin to be tempted. All right? Well, actually, we're going to talk about it a little bit. It's a, it's a, temptation is a good thing. All right? It's not a sin to be tempted. These temptations come in front of us every day. And what we have to understand is that they come from the world. They come from Satan. They're every day. Every day that you're on this earth, they will be here with you. Uh -huh. All right? And you have to decide what you're going to do about it. Okay? And it's not a sin. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, the decision that you make about it Try the whole other story. Yeah. Uh, and you also need to understand that Satan or the world cannot force you into any decision. Okay? It's always up to you. It's always up to me. Yep. All right? When I go off the road, it's because I decided to go off the road. It has nothing to do with my friends, my family, my church, nothing. It's on me. It's laying on my shoulder. All right? Just that is, as it is laying on my shoulders when I go off the road, it is also laying on my shoulders to get back to the road. That's right. Okay? It's, a, it's an awful responsibility. I mean, when you look at the, at the load that we're trying to carry here to keep everything on the straight and there, it's a big job, particularly in the world that we live in today. That's why you can't do it by yourself. That's why we're not expected to do it by ourselves. Okay? Now, look at verse number 13. Here's the interesting part. Verse number 13. It says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Now, look at me. You've heard the preacher say over and over and over, there's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. There is nothing that's going to be put in front of you that hasn't already been put in front of somebody else. Mm -hmm. All right? So it's not like you say, man, I don't understand why this is happening to me. Well, it, don't just, it ain't just happening to you. That's right. It happens to everybody. So we need to, <laughs> and here again, it's not about what's happening. It's about how we're going to deal with it. That's mm -hmm. the important part. Yep. It's going to happen every day, all the time. It's how we deal with it that matters. Okay? Now, but God, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not suffer you <coughs> to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that, that, ye, may, that ye may be able to bear it. Now, when you are tempted, and you're going to be tempted, you'll be tempted to die, mm -hmm. right? When you're tempted, God's going to give you an out. All right? The Holy Spirit's going to say, hey, here, go this way. Everything will be fine. All right? Now we got to decide. Are we going this way? Okay? Now, think about this one. There's a man sitting in his living room. Okay? Saturday afternoons watching college football. And this is a, a good Christian man. I mean, he's working at it. He's trying. He's saved. The man had a drinking problem once upon a time. He drank a lot. All right? Now, all of a sudden, the phone rings. It's one of his buddies on the phone. They're out on the other end of town. It's a sports bar. And they said, come on, come on out. We want a small game together. He says, well, okay. I'll be out there a little bit. Hangs the phone up. Now, here's where he makes his first decision. He gets up, gets dressed, starts moving. Holy Spirit says, hey, sit back down. It's mm -hmm. a bad idea. Okay? Well, he continues on, goes to the, to the, out the driveway, gets the car keys, gets in the car, backs out in the road, starts down the road, they're working on the road. Detour. 
He's got to go five miles out of the way to get back around where he's supposed to be. The Holy Spirit says, turn around. Right here, turn around. This is not going to end well. Does a detour. Goes around. Goes out. Gets to the sports bar. No place to park. Drives around. Drives around. Holy Spirit saying, you might want to just go back to the house. This is not a good idea. Okay? Drives around. Finally somebody leaves. He finds a place to park. Pulls in. Now, the Holy Spirit says, don't get out of the car. You need to go back to the house. Man gets out of the car, goes in, sits down at the bar with his friends and says, Lord, please help me not to drink here. <laughs> All right, that's not going to, I ain't going to get it. No. All right, that's not how it works. All right, the man had already made five bad decisions getting there. The Holy Spirit had told him five times, getting there, this is a bad idea. Now, you come right down to the nitty gritty, and now you're going to turn around and say, okay, here's why I need your help. We need to think about that, all right? God is going to give you an out. That's right. He doesn't say he's going to give you two. He says he's going to give you an out, mm -hmm. right? And from my experience, he's not going to wait on you forever, all right? Here it is, Dave. Don't do this. Go here, okay? Nah, nah, I got it. Well, of course you ain't got it. And <laughs> God's going to look at you and say, okay, all right, have at it. I told you. I gave you an opportunity. You didn't take it. Okay? We, we need to think about that. Yep. I mean, that happens, and it happens quite often. We need to be careful about that. Okay? Okay. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to stop right here. We've got one little, um, and we're, kind of, we're a little early, but we're going to quit. Uh, we have one more little thing we need to do with this temptation. And, you know, and this is a problem with teaching uh, an adult Sunday school class. Next Sunday, which is the Sunday before Thanksgiving, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the Sunday before Christmas are the two hardest times of the year to come up with lessons teaching in an adult Sunday school class. What am I going to tell you about Thanksgiving that you don't know? All right? <laughs> Particularly Christmas. I mean, how many times do you talk about the baby in the maid? What can I tell you about Christmas? That you, so it is. It, it becomes difficult sometimes. But what we're going to talk about next week, we're going to finish up this thing with the world and this thing with temptation, and we're going to tie it into a Thanksgiving lesson It'll all be good. If we get that done, what we've got left to do is the flesh. And uh, that's hard. That's a hard Oh, mercy. I've, I've, and I've told you this before, I believe that of the three things that we have to deal with, Satan, the world, and the flesh, I believe that the flesh is the hardest. Yeah. I mean, it's a, that's, a major, that's a major thing all the time. So we'll talk about that. Um, it's good to see y'all here this morning. There are some of you all here who haven't been here for a while. It's good to see you back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I've told you this, we've got a good Sunday school class here, I think. We've got a, we got a good bunch of people. Uh, y'all are carrying me through it. So we'll be able to do good things. But it is good. It is good to see you back. Don't forget about your phone calls. Call somebody this week and see where they are, what they're doing. How are things going for them? And tell me, even some school. Okay? Do you have anything? We got a minute here. Okay, anything you want to talk about? I was going to mention something uh, that you addressed earlier okay. the gap theory. Mm -hmm. One reason a lot of Christians are going over to something like that is because it all comes back to whether or not you believe the Word of God or you do not. And it's like you had talked about how <clears throat> between verse 1 and verse 2, they believed there was a race of people, you know, and all this. Well, 1 Corinthians 15, 45 says the first man, Adam. When you take God at his word, you don't have a problem with these other things. All right, wait, wait, stop right there. I'll just yeah. finish. Yeah. He's right, and that's important. 
this theory that these people were talking about, a person who has any reasonable knowledge of the Bible can go through and say, well, here, see what says here. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. That is where we need to be. All right? And, and that takes time. Time and it takes work. We need to be able to say, here's what we believe, and here's why we believe it. And here's why this is wrong. Okay? That was that was it. That was that was I was thinking of that when you said that. I thought, you know, if they just knew the word of God, well it's like Jesus said, you do err not knowing the scriptures. And you know, and I'll be the first to admit this, that's a weak spot for us. You know? We talked about that back when we were talking about our biblical worldview. We we are pretty well the people of our church are pretty well grounded in what we believe. You know, you can ask pretty much anybody and say, well, what do you think about this? And they'll say, well, I believe, do, 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 do. All right? But then it's, they say, well, show me where it says that in the Bible. Mm -hmm. now, we're, now we're stuck. Okay? We need to be better at that. All of us, me, preacher, you. That's something we need to work on. And I truly believe, and I really believe this, that the situation we're in in the world today and the way that we're headed, that all of these problems that these churches are having in a more populated area like Christiansburg, they're coming. Okay? Right. They're yeah. coming. Right. We've got we to gotta get set and get ready and be grounded in our, what we believe. Anybody else? Set? You have been awful quiet over our day, son. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Back I'm glad you're back. I'm glad to see you here. We're doing good. Don't forget uh, the phone calls. So I was talking about just back to the liberal ways they're getting today. <clears throat> There's no question, you're right. There's no question that society as a whole is headed in a liberal direction. All right. And and what this guy was talking about over Christiansburg. Churches are beginning to go that way. That's right, yeah. Right? That's not good. Nope. That's not good at all. The churches are beginning to go that way, and they say, well, you know, if we're, if we're heading in this direction, we can get more people in here. Hmm. Right? It's not about how many people you got. That's right, yep. No. We need to make sure that we, that we know what we're talking about and that what we're talking about is Bible. Yeah. Okay? Biblical worldview. If we get a preacher that believes everything except for one point, like say he retires or he dies, we get a preacher that believes everything we believe except for one point, and we accept him, and then that one point drifts away. Yep. Well, you know the 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 thing there is like. What you said, we get a preacher that believes everything that we believe except one point. And we accept it. All right, there's Holy Spirit saying, no, 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 it's a bad idea. Yep. All right? He's a friendly guy, Yeah, and he may be good looking, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we ain't got time for him. That's not, that's not what we, that's, that right there is what gets you in trouble. Yeah. Except one little thing. And, there, and like we were talking about Satan deceiving Eve, and one little thing, Satan said, that's okay. That's all right. That's not going to matter. He'll get over that. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, he won't get over it. All right? No, it's not a good thing. we got to pay attention. Anybody else? We good? Harry, would you lead us in prayer? We'll be done. Father, we thank you for our kind of Lord's name and privilege to be in your house once again. We thank you every day that you send us a little lesson. Him for the law as he leaves and so it's this morning. Father, we just uh, each and every of our church and bless the these in the pandemic to remind us, Father, just of our hope and trust and dependence upon you. We thank you for the life that you gave Christ and through him to live life eternally. Bless throughout the remaining services today. Father, it's absolutely faithful and we thank you again for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.